You want to see what your batteries are really doing. You want to know the exact state of charge, no guesswork, no round the corners. This is the Victron Shunt. Today I'm going to show you how you can monitor this from your phone or right in your home assistant off of a dashboard. So let's get to it. I'm going to start right here at the shunt. I'm going to take these covers off so that you can see the wiring around the shunt and what is really hooked up here because it's quite simple inline connection and I've loosened most of this so it should come off pretty easily but I want you to see both sides of how this is connected. So the shunt is an inline of the negative connection. So as you can see over on this side are all of my battery terminals. This has all three of my EG4 connections for my EG4 uh, three, uh, 100 amp hour batteries. And this goes to my DIY battery, which is right here, which is another 304 amps or 16 kilowatts, 15, 16 kilowatts, somewhere in that neighborhood. 15.6, I think, is where it really rounds off to. The shunt connects on this side to the minus to the actual batteries themselves. And on the to the um, to the system on this side, and I bust out both sides of it to make it very easy for me to maintain and control. So all of my loads go over here, all of my batteries go over there, and the shunt goes right in the middle to measure all the flow back and forth. So there's no more guesswork, there's no more estimating, and you can see a, a live, and I'll see if I can throw up some images here of live home assistant showing you historically what's going on with the batteries. It makes it very easy to monitor it and know that those BMS shunts are, are truly inexpensive shunts that aren't real accurate and they require a lot of work to get them really calibrated. This shunt runs about $100 and it is, and I'll include a link down in the description below, but this shunt runs about $100 there. You can buy it in practically anywhere uh, I'll include links to all the different places, and most of them are my affiliate links. So if you get one, get it from one of my uh, affiliate links, and you'll help me out a little bit. Now let's talk about some of the functionality that comes with the the, the Victron Smart Shunt. So first of all, it tracks the voltage, and you'll see here from these two little wires leads running off here. It also tracks the temperature of my bus bar right here. I determined with a thermal gun that this was the hot spot of all of my entire battery system. So I put that thermal sensor in right here and it connects to that first lead coming off of that battery running to my system and I didn't pop this cover off so I'm going to pull it off right now so that you can see where it is. And I take these cover right here off. There we go. And you can see that it basically takes this lead coming off into these fuses and it measures the temperature right there at that system, allowing me to know exactly the temperature of the hottest spot on my system. Now, I did measure all of this equipment and make sure that that was the right spot to do it. I didn't just guess to put it there. I went around and determined which spot was the weakest point and which spot created the most heat. And it makes sense that coming in off of this fuse from this main bus bar that's where the most power is going to be hitting, is right there at this little connection. This is a one aught cable made with marine grade wire, so it can support up to 250 amps, but it's still the hottest place, and I've seen it get as high as 190 degrees Fahrenheit. So it does get very warm, even as low as 120 amps. So you need to be very careful when you're hooking up systems like this that you, you put those monitors where they belong. So, that is one of the add-on features to the shunt, and I believe the monitor is about an extra $30, and I'll put a link to it down below also. But in addition to that, it tracks the voltage of your battery right off of this, which means any voltages you have showing up beyond this that, are, that have any losses would be something that you should be concerned about. In other words, if my, if my 6000 XP reports that the voltage is lower than what I'm reporting from the shunt, then I know that there's some kind of bad connection somewhere between here, whether from the bus, whether the connectors into the, the panels, a fuse, something is causing it to have a difference in voltage measurement because that measurement comes directly from the positive bus bar over on this side 
and the negative coming through the shunt. So that's what it, one of the big ones. It also measures the current for you. And that means that based on the voltage, you're going to know exactly how much current is flowing. And we're not talking about just flowing in one direction or the other. It measures the positive current going into the battery and it measures the negative current coming out of the battery, which is very useful because that allows it to very precisely calculate the state of charge. Of all the state of charges I have between the DIY battery, the EG4 batteries, the, 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 e, the 6000 XP that collects it from either CAN, uh, closed loop, open loop, however it does it, all of them, the only one that I trust that comes off of this shunt it is the most accurate. I go months sometimes, and it is the place where I find the most accurate setup. Okay, so all of that said, um, let me show you a little bit about the app. The app allows you to determine all of the different configurations, and I'm going to insert some some, some pieces here, and then probably do a little bit more detailed analysis of the app and give you an idea. But you can see the basic voltage, you can see the state of charge, you can see the current within the app, and the app runs off of Bluetooth. So you don't have a tremendous distance that you can get to that, that data, but you do have enough that if it was in a small RV or something like that, that you can get to it. Um, I also, to have mine plugged in to a Venus system here. And the Venus system acts like a, 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 a Victron device that allows me to connect this directly to my home assistant. And I'll show you some stats on the screen of the home assistant and the details that come from it. All of the details that are stored in this Victron under the application are also transferred to my home assistant through, uh, through a server. So it uh, allows me very easy access to what they are. It also allows me to monitor it, get text messages, emails, and it allows me to automate things around it, turn off and on stuff, turn off and on like hot water heaters and stuff like that when the state of charge is, is, is where I want. It also can give me alerts when the charging uh, system is, is in excess of what I have available. Uh, I know today I had 93, 94 amps coming in and I had also uh, had the grid turned on for a little bit of charging because we had hit zero last night. And that was of concern. So it warned me that, hey, your amperage for your battery charging is over 100. And I usually pay attention to that. Not that I'm particularly worried about it, but I don't like to have that kind of uh, power going through without me being able to monitor it until I'm a bit more comfortable with it, maybe a couple 10,000 years from now. Let's get into the home assistant. And this is where the rubber meets the road because this is where my home is, my Victron shunt feeds into and gives me data such as this right here. Uh, as you can see, I'm at 86 or 87%. And you can easily look back at statistics and determine where you've been. And this is kind of why I've got the charger running today. I was at 3% this morning and I was at 3% yesterday morning uh, and my charger kicked on. And then you can see that the Victron shunt, knowing that I was there, that's at 46 uh, volts. And so it is very accurate, even though it has been a very long time since I've done an actual full charge. I mean, we're talking weeks and weeks and weeks and months, maybe. Um, so the fact that it is still accurate after all this time. But what is really cool about the Victron shunt, let me just see if I can get you into some of the details, is it monitors the voltage. It monitors the uh, details of how many amps are going in and out of your batteries as total. So I've got on different screens, you'll see here I've got the amperage and we can take a look at throughout the day what the different amperage was that was coming in from the Victron shunt and what is being going out. And this will allow you to track multiple days of history, if you like, and see how much is being used from time to time. So you can see here, it gives you detailed information over the last, um, this looks like over the last 24 hours or so, but you can easily adjust this timeline. And I could say, I wanna see last Tuesday and uh, select, and it'll give me a time slice of Tuesday's exact uh, amperage. In addition to that, you've got history from voltage, amperage, 
uh, everything to state of charge and everything that the Victron reports within Home Assistant. So you can see here as the sun comes up and whatever devices I have, which are the coffee pots in the morning, they run until they shut down. And then you can see the charging happens all day long. And then you can see when the sun comes down or the dinner, nighttime dinner comes when we start cooking. That's what this is over here. So there is absolutely uh, every reason that the Victron shunt, everything about the Victron shunt is exactly perfect for measuring voltage of a multi-battery pack and getting precise precision to knowing exactly how much battery voltage you have stored in that battery or how much, let me rephrase that, and know exactly how much energy is stored in your entire pack and not just an individual battery and with a device that is accurate enough to maintain the pluses and minuses that come and go with that over the period of months, not just a few days. All right, so let's talk about final thoughts here and, and my opinions on the, the, the why I like having this. The reason I bought this is exactly the reason I enjoy having it. It gives me an accurate state of charge a real representation of the amperage coming through, regardless of all the different feeds. No matter what the 6000 XP says, no matter how much the char other chargers feed into it, no matter what the charge verter that I have over here feeds into it, all of this information is tracked through one device in one location, and I get an accurate representation of all the data going in, all the power coming out, and exactly what the state of charge is. There's no more guessworking. This is a real fuel gauge that I can trust that I know what's in my batteries. Not only that, not only do I know what's in my batteries, but I know what's in all of my batteries because this is based on the size of my battery bank. Not the fact that these are EG4 batteries. This is a DIY battery running on a JK BMS. It doesn't matter. For this, it's a fuel gauge that says, how big is your tank? I tell it it's 604 uh, amp hours. And it says, great, at 604 amp hours, how much, batter, how much is in the entire bank, regardless if they stay in balance, if one works a little harder than the other, if one works a little easier than the other, it doesn't matter. It's measuring the entire tank size for me. And that is really the biggest reason for it. Um, setting up is very easy. Connecting the wires on both sides of this. If you choose to have a, a therm thermometer, you can put that on there. If you don't, it's even easier. If you choose to only use the Bluetooth, you don't need any of these wires on the top. You basically hook up the positive, the negative. You do need a little negative, a uh, little positive connection on this to, to fuel it. But other than that, it's pretty simple setup. If you're going to have any type of off-grid setup, and you're going to be using any type of batteries that you, that you want the real estate to charge, more than one battery of any kind, this is what you need. Uh, I would suggest that you take a look at the links down below. And uh, if you can, use one of my affiliate links. But what's more important is that you understand this is how I get an accurate representation of everything I have. And this is my trusted go-to device for how much fuel is in my tank. Thanks for watching. Thanks to all my subscribers. Man, you guys are fantastic. Uh, th thank you for all the members that have joined. And uh, especially the la this weekend, I had a special member. I'll put his name on the screen. He came in and he bought a whole bunch of memberships for everybody that was in the live stream. That was fantastic and nice of you. And I really appreciate you. And if you found this video and videos like this from, uh, helpful, make sure you hit the like button. Also, click that subscribe button and turn that bell on because if you don't turn that bell on, they'll put these feed, they'll put these videos in your feed, but they won't tell you when a new one comes out. All members get early access to videos. As soon as they're done, I post them for the members to view. Everyone else sees them when they release. 